Fall is starting to make its presence known here in Wisconsin, and that means outdoor life is moving back inside. I'm Veronica Rickard, and this is Badger Talks. Today, with our windows closed and patios and lawns out of commission, how do we make sure our air quality doesn't make us more vulnerable to COVID-19? Tim Bertram is with us today to help answer that question. He's a professor of chemistry and an expert on air quality. Tim, thank you so much for taking the time to talk today. Sure, I'm happy to be here. So here it is, I've got my heat on, I've got my windows closed, <laughs> but with COVID-19, we keep hearing how important it is for spaces to be well ventilated. So where does that leave us? It's a great question, right? We've taken advantage of having uh, outdoor spaces that we can gather in. And now as we move indoors, we need to be mindful of the spaces that we enter. Uh, keeping uh, ourselves in the spaces that are very well ventilated is an advantage to all of us. That means running your furnace fans if you're in an individual environment like your home, or being mindful of the spaces that you might find yourself in and, and limiting the time that you spend in those spaces with lots of other people. So in terms of our home life and, and classrooms, there are things that we have control over and things that we have no control over. So let's start with the stuff that we can change and we can have an impact on. What can we do as individuals? Sure. One of the best things we can do as individuals is to wear our masks, right? We've heard this over and over again. But if all of us wear a mask in the indoor environment and we keep our physical spacing between one another, that gives us the, the best chance to limit the transmission of the virus. I've been seeing some advertising that seems to suggest air purifiers, and sometimes these are really expensive, by the way, that they will help cut the risk. Is there anything to that? Sure. There, so there's a range of different types of air purifiers. Uh, the, the classic type of air purifier is simply a filter. I mean, it can be as simple as thinking about a box fan with a furnace filter duct taped to it, right? That's an effective way to filter out particulates in a room. They can scale up to very intricate filter designs that have what we call HEPA filters in them that work really well at moving air through the filter in an in-room environment. You don't want to make your air worse by adding in some sort of gimmicky air purifier into it, but utilizing a, a technology that's well established, like filters, uh, works always to your advantage. Some of us are already thinking ahead, thinking, oh my gosh, what are we going to do over the holidays? Thanksgiving, I think, is the first big one that we're indoors coming up. Can we have people in our homes and ventilated enough so that we're kind of safe? Or what, what do you recommend? Right. I think keeping the number of interactions that you have limited is so important, right? To stay within this, your circle of family or circle of friends. If you have to be in an indoor environment with other people, wearing your mask and keeping your distance is the most effective strategy. In addition to that, being in a room that's well ventilated is extremely helpful for mitigating any type of airborne transmission of this virus. So one thing a lot of people are curious about is just how far the air particles do travel. It seems like there's been a lot of debate about that. Is there consensus? This is a real hot topic and it's a great question. So the particulates that are formed through any type of uh, respiratory, so these respiratory particles, they're formed through breathing, they're formed through talking, and they're formed through coughing. They're formed over a wide range of sizes from the macroscopic big droplets that you see as spit, right? When somebody coughs or they sneeze, those particles don't travel very far and they're actually really not easy to inhale. They might impact on you and you might wipe your shirt or your face and, and touch your mouth. It's the smaller ones that we're worried about, the particles that might be that are much smaller than what you can see. So sort of the analogy that's easiest to think about there is to think about somebody smoking indoors, right? You can't escape the smell of the smoke. Of course, if you get closer to the smoker, right, you're going to inhale more smoke. But if you're in the corner of a room and it's a stuffy, poorly ventilated room, you're still going to be inhaling those smoke particles. And the, I think that where people are, are going with this is, is that the small particles that do carry virus that are exhaled in a poorly ventilated room can move all through that space. 
Wow. <laughs> Not good news. So mask and uh, well, ven good ventilation for your room. Tim, uh, lots of good info. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you. If you have questions for us or topic suggestions or want to comment on this Badger Talk, send us an email to covid19update at uc.wisc.edu. And for more information, you can go to covid19.impact.wisc.edu. This is Badger Talks.